Welcome to Last First Date Radio, featuring interviews with experts in dating, relating, and mating in midlife. And now, here's your host, Sandy Weiner. This is episode number 406 with Jeff Cook, the future of live streaming and dating. Hey everybody, I'm Sandy Weiner, and welcome to Last First Date Radio, where we believe it is never too late for love and that a woman of value naturally attracts the respect and rewards she deserves in life and in love. And speaking of women of value, my book is now available on Amazon, Kindle and paperback. It is called Becoming a Woman of Value, How to Thrive in Life and Love. So make sure to go and get your copy after the show. We bring you a tip every week on becoming a woman of value. And this week's tip is be the love you wish to find in the world. And what I mean by that is that often we want things from people, we want to attract a certain kind of person, but we are not that person ourselves. And we haven't yet worked on ourselves and our kindness and our generosity and whatever it is that you want out in the world. So if you want to attract in love, be the love. And that is my challenge to you today. So what can you do to increase your love that you're putting out into the world, whether it's by being more of a contributor, by being more open, less closed off and walled in, whatever it is, uh, go ahead and just to take one step in that direction. And before I bring Jeff on, I just wanted to tell you, if you don't already know, I have a fantastic Facebook group. It's called Your Last First Date. It's a free group for women over 40 who are searching for a positive place to support them on their journey to lasting love. So join your last first date. And now for my guest, Jeff Cook. He is a serial entrepreneur and the CEO of The Meat Group. It started out as a single brand and he grew it to over $30 million in revenue before merging with a public company in a $100 million deal. Since then, he has led the company to acquire four more social apps, Growler for $11.8 million, and Andreessen Horowitz, is that how you pronounce it? Andreessen Horowitz. Uh, Andreessen. Yeah, Scout backed, or uh, Andreessen Horowitz backs out, is app Scout. The, the, so he backed, backed that for $55 million, these are big numbers, and tagged for $60 million, and Lovu, is that how you pronounce that one? Lovu. Lavu for seventy million dollars. So that's that's a lot of money we're talking about. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks for having me. The coronavirus, uh, everything got turned upside down the last few months, and as we're recording this, things are starting to open up and phasing into phase one, phase two. But a lot of people who were dating have quit dating, or some of them have actually gone on dating apps and are actually finding finding love now. So in your experience, how has coronavirus affected the dating industry and in particular your dating apps? Yeah, so um, obviously the hallmark of the virus has been kind of the social distancing and the kind of the shutdown of society starting with early early to mid-March. And right away we noticed a dramatic increase in use of our live streaming video platform. Um, so people who were accustomed to um, chatting, uh, sending text messages back and forth uh, in order to set up people to uh, potentially date and meet in real life, um, they started uh, shifting towards the live streaming platform where live streaming was uh, a replacement for uh, real life interaction. Um, obviously, uh, from a, at least a viral exposure, uh, uh, you know, very, very you know, risk-free sort of uh, uh, socialization. And so we saw, you know, a dramatic, you know, uptick in, in minutes spent in our live streaming platform. Every day, more than a million of our users are, are in our, plat- our live streaming platform. And um, I would say that what we've seen is, is, is that, that continued to move up for, for, for some time um, and then kind of uh, reached its, it, its latest plateau. Um, but hasn't spiked down despite the fact of reopening of society. So we, we saw the spike up without a spike down. And I think what um, that's suggesting, although you know, it's, it's still early, is that um, 
you know, people are getting more and more comfortable with live streaming. So, you know, live streaming in the dating context can be uh, fraught, you know, it's putting yourself out there for others to um, see, comment on, um, it can be um, high friction to do that. Um, but, you know, I've heard someone put it, I don't remember who, say, you know, the, the virus is um, kind of pulling the future forward where, you know, three years of, uh, of what might have been innovation in certain areas uh, gets done in three months. And, 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 and I think that's what, we're, that's what we're seeing because user behaviors change so dramatically. You know, they, they, they shifted to, they, they no, no longer cared about, they no longer valued real life meetings. They, they started shifting to live streaming. And that's really the, um, you know, I, I think the question will be on this other side of this virus is what, um, what, what does that look like as, uh, what, what is the ongoing role of live streaming with respect to dating when societies start to reopen? And I think we're, we're starting to see some of that, but we're in the very earliest days of that one. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I, I'm not only a dating coach, but I'm also dating. And so I've used some of the live stream options in some of the dating apps. Don't love some of the ways that, it, it, some of it can, can uh, depend on the other person and what their Wi-Fi is like and you know whether things are crashing on the other end and that can be frustrating. But mm -hmm. I have found, and I actually taught two courses on dating during the pandemic because so many people were saying, well, now it's a good time to take a break. And I felt from the beginning that it was a great time to date differently and to really take advantage of the fact that we have taken a whole bunch of things off the table, like sex, physical contact, um, who pays on a first date, like all, a lot of the things that people were struggling with, we don't have those to deal with right now. So we can really get to know people in a, in a real way, which has not happened in, in the online dating world in this way for, I, ever, right? I mean, it's almost like Victorian times in some ways where people have to take time. So have you seen, you know, any uptick in, in relationships and in deeper relationships? Like, do you have any data on that? Um, the data we, we have, you know, we, we surveyed our users probably every two weeks um, for uh, across different questions. And we were trying to get a sense for their level of fear of the virus, their sense of their own likelihood to date in the next 30 days, you know, from a risk perspective. Um, and we, we saw, you know, in the, in the March, uh, early April timeframe, you know, pretty, that, that's when the, when the fear of the virus spiked um, and the number of people um, uh, expecting to date in the next 30 days, um, cra you know, cratered. Um, now we're, we're seeing a pretty strong, uh, for better or worse, of course, we're seeing a pretty strong uh, increase in willingness to, uh, or at least in expectations that they'll date in the next 30 days um, and, and much less fear of the virus. And, What's interesting is, you know, we, we run five different dating applications. Um, uh, you know, Meet Me is a, is a, is a large uh, streaming, or dating streaming app in the US, Tags an African American version of that app. Um, but uh, Growler, ha Growler users, which is our gay dating app, uh, consistently had the most fear of the virus and kind of the most, I would say, um, medically uh, informed viewpoints on when to we begin uh, dating and uh, you know being being much less likely to think that they were going to start dating in the next 30 days so I, I, I you know we, we found all of that that interesting I, I, I would say that um, that be, what we're what we're currently and, and I would say the, the early part of the pandemic we were very focused on bringing uh, video solutions to the one app. We have five apps. Only one didn't have video. We basically stopped everything. And, and, and because we saw the success of those other four apps um, in increasing video minutes, we, we felt a uh, real urgency to get done uh, a planned video uh, rollout on, on the one app that was without it. Um, and right now, because we are starting to see our users say they're planning to uh, date in the next 30 days, we're starting to think, well, what does that 
um, what, what will that mean for, for the app and for the products? And we have a, a product um, currently expected out in, in July or August that will start to think, reimagine video, not just as a replacement for human interaction, um, but also, um, but, but more as a filter for deciding whom to meet in real life. Because we think clearly this virus is gonna be with us for some time um, at some, in ver you know, various levels, depending on where you live. Um, and it's going to weigh on people's uh, desire to date. There's gonna be many who date. Um, and you know, we think that video is actually a pretty interesting way of filtering out people that you might otherwise have just had a bad first date with. And of course you could still have a bad first date with video, um, but you get video is just such a rich media that gives you a good sense of their current appearance for one, um, but their personality, uh, their voice, you know, um, how they react, are they ill? Are they visibly ill? Um, you know, and so it, it I think it's a, it would be a strange thing to, to want to, meet a, a complete stranger um, without having first had, um, ha had an interaction on video, especially you know, in this age of uh, pandemic. So, so I think that's, that's what we believe is gonna be the kind of the lasting um, aspect. Um, and, and I think you know, there'll probably be uh, more and more investment by other dating companies in video. We, we, we've, began investing in live streaming video and dating in 2016 when we started building the product and and then launched it in 2017 so we've, we've been now doing it for more than three years um we 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 had been more or less the only ones in the western world doing it <laughs> um now we expect every dating company every app to launch uh video in some form or another and and, and for those video solutions to uh outlive the virus Interesting. So yes, video dating can help you to filter. And I have found certainly that I saved a lot of time by meeting people on video. Back in the day before the coronavirus, when I would meet people who lived a little bit of a distance away, I would also use video to see if it's worth continuing to get to know someone. So I think in many ways I've compared this to long distance dating, you know, that there's some time before you can actually meet up. So you get to know each other and see if it's worth spending the time and the effort getting to know someone. Mm -hmm. I, I meet all my clients on Zoom. So I, I haven't met most of the people that I've worked deeply with. So I know how powerful video is. And I'm wondering, like, in terms of people choosing to stay on the video part of the app versus getting off and doing FaceTime, Zooms, you know, Skype. What, what have you seen as the reasons why people stay on the app versus going off to a, a third party app? I think there's a few. Um, and one is just, of course, ease and convenience. So if you're, if you start off on an app, um, you know, you, you kind of need to have a reason to, to, to leave it. Um, and that reason may well be to, um, to, to access some functionality that doesn't exist, or it may be to access some functionality that may exist in, a, in, in at least a perceived better way. Um, and so, you know, so, so you would add video simply to uh, improve ease and convenience. Um, some people are just interested in, in privacy. Like they, they, they wouldn't want um, to provide, for example, um, certainly a cell phone number at that stage, maybe even an email address. Um, to find you. So, so if you could keep your interactions kind of compartmentalized, um, you know, you don't have to think about, uh, you know, potentially letting someone into your, into, into your apps that you use mostly for friends and family. Um, I would say another is the, the products we build when, when we talk about video, they're, they're not just, you know, um, FaceTime for uh, in, in another another flavor. Um, what our product is that has been working is we basically turn every um, every user of the application into the star of their own little mini dating game. And so um, you're probably familiar with speed dating online, where you know it's a one-on-one -on -one interaction where um, 
uh, you know, you might spend three minutes and then move on to the next person. That's actually not what we what we do. We we, we have a version of speed dating, but um, it's 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 public speed dating. So uh, you have viewers and they can rate the the streamer uh, and the contestant for the streamer. So basically, you have your primary streamer and people you can decide who you want to get in line to date. And it's a game that we we call next date. And the streamer has two buttons, the next button and the date button. And if they tap the next button, they move to whoever is next in queue. If they tap the date button, um, then one-on-one -on -one, uh, video uh, credentials are revealed and they can connect with each other at some future point. Um, and that's, uh, that's been a pretty successful product with you know, 100,000 plus games being played every day. Um, and the reason we went with, uh, at least the, the business reason we went with um, that approach is because this is actually our third iteration of video um, probably goes back to 2008, 2009, when our first iteration of video was, and another failed attempt in 2012, 13. Um, each time we did video in the past, it failed because people don't, there's not, there's not too many creators of video out there. Um, you know, maybe one, two, three percent of your users are going to be a creator of video. There's a lot more uh, viewers of video. That could be seven to 10 more uh, people wanting to watch a video than wanting to uh, stream themselves. And so, any product that um, requires you to be on video is by definition a small product, <laughs> at least from a usage perspective. And so um, that's what led us to our current model, which has been, has been working you know, very well. But um, you know, I, I would say that uh, that's, that, so that's kind of one of the main reasons I think that people keep their interactions in the app is because the app is is aiming to deliver you a video experience you can't get um, somewhere else. Uh, there have been some shows that people have done. I don't know if they've used your app where they have like a speed dating. I can't remember the name of of the pod. It's like a podcast, and they they mm -hmm. have shows where people um, the audience gets to vote on who somebody dates. Yep, Are you okay, familiar yeah. with what I'm talking about? Sure, like a television show, or are you talking about? It's it's like a live stream kind of Instagram oh, okay. kind of thing yeah. where people, yeah. you know, vote you should you should date that one again and. Yeah, I mean the dating game is um, a format that, you know, has existed in fifty plus different interaction iterations across you know traditional television media, and um, our goal and and the our insight in twenty sixteen seventeen was that we could create the live streaming version of that. Um, and that's kind of what we, we set out to do. Um, but, you know, there won't be just one, just as there isn't one, just one uh, television dating game format. Um, there's The Bachelor, there's so many different ones. But, um, you know, we, we, we saw it as um, an opportunity to be among the first ones creating these formats um, and to create kind of, one to two such interesting formats every year. Um, and so like this year and only in the last four weeks or so, we launched a feature um, called Blind Date, which is a little bit of a spin on um, the next date game that I mentioned where instead of seeing the person who's queuing up, um, you see a blurred out video screen. Um, so, you, you know, you, you, they're pixelated. Um, you can't actually see who it is. And at the end, if you, so, so it forces the person on, on uh, who's, who's trying to, to speed date you to, to say something, you know, to have some conversation that's interesting. Um, and um, if the person who's, uh, who's the primary streamer taps the date button, in this case, then they reveal the, uh, the, the participant. And so um, it's kind of a fun gamification of, Kind of a guest video box, but the upshot is that there's dramatically higher uh, matching percentages. People people are much more likely to tap tap the date button on next on a next date game, uh, on a blind date game, just because it's more it's kind of more fun. Um, yeah. And so, but it, but it's not just that it's more fun. It, it, it's it's also that instead of reacting to what the person looks like is the very first thing you do you're kind of forced to get about 60 seconds or so of conversation in. 
And then when you're revealed what that person looks like, the fact that you had already had some banter affects how attractive that person is to you, right? And so um, it, 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 it's interesting. And, and it's you know, one of these areas that we're trying to always think further down, you know, how do, how do you kind of bring out personality um, in, into, into dating more to the fore? I love that. Blind dates have become all the, all the rage on Netflix and, uh, and Amazon Prime. And with just, I always like to watch these shows just as a fly on the wall and so, sort of like an anthropologist looking at social, the way people socialize, the way people choose partners. And this, this show called Dating Around, on, I think it's on Netflix. They just released a second season. And it's five blind dates and you have to, and they only get one second date with one person. And so it's always mm -hmm. interesting to me to see who they choose because with some, the chemistry is off the charts, but they don't always choose that person. And I'm always happy when they don't because often that's just the same type that they've always chosen, which is why these blind mm -hmm. date kind of not seeing the person at all really helps you to get to know people beyond mm -hmm. the physical. And I, I personally feel that we place so much on the, on the physical that we often overlook red flags and we don't really get to know a person. We're just so taken by their looks. We get intimidated. We, I mean, there's just so many things that happen when, mm -hmm. when the attraction is, is too strong too quickly. So this is really interesting. Um, yeah, so what, so now, you know, the pandemic is, who knows, um, <laughs> we're get, definitely getting a second wave of, of viruses because of things opening up. And I don't think we're ending this, this whole pandemic in the near future. I mean, I don't think we're out of the, out of the weeds yet. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of dating and live streaming so you're adding more and more you think there is a place in the future for this i mean you had it in the past so what do you see as as, as the future besides some of the things that you shared with us today yeah i mean i think um what you're gonna see in the future is that you know every app in in the in the space adds video in some form or another like like right now, we we've had it, you know, in in, in our form, kind of uh, for some years, but um, and we we continue to innovate within that form. So I, I think fr from us, you'll see more dating games. Um, you and you'll you'll start to see games that cross over. So where something happens in the app on video that leads to something happening in the real world, um, and and some kind of stakes involved. Uh, you know, if you think about what a dating game is. It's typically, you know, people go out and evaluate each other in some format and the people who, um, uh, you know, who emerge successful, um, they go on some all expense paid trip somewhere, at least out to dinner. Um, and so uh, we've been thinking about what, is, what does that look like in a live streaming setup? And uh, you know, we'll have our first kind of view of that, you know, this summer. Um, but but every every video app, I mean, uh, Tinder is of course the the biggest dating app out in the world. Um, they've been talking about video in their public comments. Um, uh, it's already kind of been in China, um, so you know that that was kind of the only area of the world that already did have strong um, video dating capabilities. But now I think you're just going to see every every app um, at it. I think it's, it's the sort of thing that takes a, a fair amount of time. Video is not something you turn on overnight. Um, there's significant, you know, moderation capabilities you need in place, but you know, you're going to see the, the biggest apps making those sorts of investments. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, you're getting my brain thinking about all the connections, like whether taking an app into the public world like like live streaming out into the public and not just not just people who are on the app you know like if if people could kind of see this televised version of this this dating game might be really fascinating to see like i'm just trying to picture all this mm. um and then adding in like um advertisers like vacations and um 
cruises and whatever, you know, just yeah. to have these prizes. And uh, yeah, it's fun. I mean, what I was doing with my clients was having them play games and giving them really interesting questions to ask so that it's not just, you know, mm -hmm. tell me about your life and what, you know, yeah. how's dating going? Like right. people just don't know what to say. And I, I, th I love the right. online games that we, you know, like, would you rather and um, mm -hmm. playing, you know, just any kind of interactive game, I think is fun or travel. Yeah. I think one of the, one of the dating apps had people, they put people in different travel situations, like in, in locations and said, you know, what are you doing here in Hawaii? Like, how would you respond to this? You know, so it's, mm -hmm. It's kind of getting people to be creative and connect in a deeper way and in a more out of the box way, I think is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that context, you know, that, that, that's, uh, you know, if you, if you try to match people on just age, gender and location, which are, of course, the important things to match on probably in every dating app, um, you know, you, you'll get some level of matching. But if, if you can add context, you're your matching percentages can go way up. And that context doesn't have to be you're both, you know, in the same, you know, yoga class or, or you, you both uh, play tennis every week. The context could be as simple as, yeah, you prefer a beach vacation to a ski vacation, you know, uh, just something to kind of get the, the conversation, you know, rolling. Um, and so I think, um, I think that's another thing you'll see. So, you know, in, in, um, my sense is the the dating landscape has been more or less defined by over the last few years an evolution in the profiles getting richer. So the profiles of of Hinge, for example, and Bumble, I think, which followed it, are 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 kind of um, interesting. There's a lot of conversation starters right there. Um, you can respond either to the person, the photo, or some of these conversation starters. They're meant to give you a better uh, sense of the person and age, gender, location, and about me. And so video is kind of, an, an, is kind of actually of a piece with that. Um, it's, it's kind of in the same vein as it's, 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 it's even richer, you know, version of the profile uh, can be a, can be real time version. Um, but, you know, it doesn't negate the need for these kind of rich static profiles that kind of live even when you're not on video. And so I think, um, I think that's another thing we're going to see is um, the, the profiles themselves just get more and more uh, rich to give you a better glimpse of a person, a better way to start a conversation with them. Um, that might include video snippets that, that aren't just, uh, you know, live streams, but, but, but that are maybe 10 second recorded videos. I, I think that there'll eventually be a time for that. Um, and maybe it's today, uh, you know, no one's, no one's really doing too much of that. Um, but you know, I think that's, that's where it's heading. Yeah. I've been thinking about that a lot because I see some, some apps have these little snippets of video. I think Bumble and Hinge allow for these tiny, they're, they're almost like, um, uh, just they're, they don't have any sound usually. Um, I think they don't allow for sound. You're not saying anything, but it's it's sort of almost like a throwback. I'm picturing a throwback to the old video dating where um, that was what video dating was, was these people would go into a studio and, and record some silly thing about themselves. And I think, you know, we're kind of, we're coming full circle. I, I would love to see less static profiles where people's photos are, you know, current, and we we get yeah. more of a feeling for a person. So I, I agree with you. I think having these conversation starters is so important. And, uh, you know, often even on Match, they have at the end, they'll say, um, I don't know, there's just like, aside from the profile, the little pieces of where you like to hang out or what books you're reading, those often have much more conversation starters than the profile itself because profiles are fairly generic you know just I'm kind I'm funny I'm creative I, it doesn't mean anything and you have right. nothing to start a conversation with so tell me more about your kindness you know, where yeah. we're going with that um, so any final words about how people can can really use these apps to help them find love 
Yeah, I mean, a great place to, to look is just to go to themeetgroup.com and, and you can see all of our five different apps and, and a brief description of each one there. Um, but, um, you know, I, or you could just download the Meet Me app. It's uh, kind of a generic, um, it's kind of general audience app that uh, I think everyone could, could enjoy. Uh, and that's on, on iPhone and Android. Um, and if you go into the live section, you'll see um, any given day, you'll see you know, many tens of thousands of streamers, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of other people watching. Um, and you'll, you'll be able to see some of these uh, dating games for yourself. You know, I think we, we need to spice up the dating life of people who are just kind of feeling very lackluster. So this has been a great conversation and people can find you on the meetgroup.com. Is that the best place? Yep. That's a great place. All right. Thank you so much, Jeff. I really Thank you. appreciate hearing from you today and thanks everybody for listening. And uh, if you love our show, please rate and review us on iTunes or uh, Apple music, whatever it's called these days. And we hope you go on your last first date very soon. Take care.